Job. Yes, I know. Solid silver. Bucket. Lovely. Nick it. Andre Brzezewski, um, Polish, rocket fuel expert. That's the man. Didn't the Russian make him an academician about ten years ago, sir? They did indeed, Mayors. Do sit down. Thank you, sir. It's his wife we're interested in at the moment, however. This lady, Sophia, currently known as Mrs. Rule. Rule, sir? He's a psychologist. He does research at Oxford, amongst other things. You don't happen to have a light, do you? I don't seem to be able to keep this damn thing in this morning. Uh, sorry, sir. No, I haven't. Yes, sir? Get me some matches, will you? Uh, she was at a displaced persons camp near Bonn from uh, October 1945 to June 1946. A hysteria case saved from permanent insanity by rule. He was a psychologist attached to the Army Rehabilitation Unit. He brought her back to England and married her. Well, what about her first husband, sir? Brzezinski? What indeed, Mears? Thank you. Callan is here, sir. Oh, good. Send him in, will you? Shall I go, sir? Uh, no, 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 no. It should interest you. Want to share all our secrets, please, sir? What'd you get? Right. Two silver candlesticks. Two silver mugs. Uh, one silver cup, Henley Regatta, 1935. Uh, a bird's picture. One miniature. Oh, yeah, and uh, 18 pounds. Five shillings and fourpence. The miniature's delightful. Really exquisite. Lonely liked it too. You're not curious about the Rule family? Well, I never heard of them. Why should I be? Because I wanted them robbed. She's a Pole, British by adoption. Her name is Sofia Bryshevska. So? Here she is, Callan, with her first husband, Dr. Andre Bryshevsky, taken in Warsaw in 1940. He taught physics at the university. She uh, seems to have a penchant for academic time. I've got a penchant for being blondes, all a matter of taste. Dr. Bryshevsky is still alive, uh, which is why I went to the trouble of getting these. They cost me £20,000 and a British passport. Well, why didn't you tell me? I would have known what to look for. My dear chap, you've done very well. We've got exactly what we wanted. Well, you could afford me. What now? Uh, nothing, thank you. I, uh... I need to keep you any longer. Well, there's nothing like feeling you're wanted. Good day, Callum. You look bewildered, Mears. Changes your whole face, makes it more boyish. Uh, well, sorry. No, 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 I like it. He won't leave it there, you know, sir. He'll check up on them now. Of course he will. He knows that's what I want him to do and he won't be able to resist it. Especially now I've told him half the story. But why only half, sir? I take it you want Bryshevsky? Yes. Well, isn't it urgent? Oh, it's urgent, all right, but uh, Callan won't be wasting his time. We need the cooperation of Mrs. Rule, uh, Mrs. Bryshevsky. 
Callan doesn't know it yet, but that's what he's organising. Well, I would have thought that was more my line of consciousness. Oh, don't worry, Mears. I haven't forgotten you. But I shall need you in Stockholm. I want you to go to the opera. Um, I am turned up, sir. Then you won't find the music too distracting, will you? What's all this, then? I've got to make a living, Mr. Callan. Here, look, my children have gone straight, have you? Oh, Mr. Callan, please. Listen. Oh, you know, come over here, will you? Come over here. Listen, I want, I want to find out. How do I, how do I get hold of a pole? A what? P-O... Bloke who comes from Poland. Well, I mean, there must be millions of them. Yeah, no, this one's important. He must be. Well, I mean, there's a pole on the Dodge run here. It used to be a pole. Come over here during the war. It was in the RAF. He might know. How does he keep alive, this pole of yours? Oh, you know, Dicer does all right, he does. I know, I must be slipping. Dicer, of course. Yeah, you know him? Yeah, I know him. Can he keep his mouth shut? If I tell him to, he can. Oh, big deal. Got a telephone down here. Yeah. Go and fix it. Yeah. Hey. Make it quick. Here. Yeah. Yes, sir? Tea. They took everything. Everything that was valuable. My jewellery, the things Charles won for Roy, even my photograph. But weren't you insured? Oh, yes. And we'll get it all back, they say, when the insurance assessor comes from London. But you can't get it all back. Not things you've bought together, made together. Precious things. I understand. The worst thing is the feeling that someone has looked into your life, into all the personal and private things one cherishes and values. The things one wanted to keep a secret forever, even from one's friends. Little bits and pieces of love. I think that someone has Put his grubby hands on all that. Yeah. No, no, but he's coming. You wait in there. He's very touching, my friend is. Worse than me. Oh, a lot worse. You touch me and I hurt you bad. I don't wish to touch you. Does this friend have a name? Yeah. He's called Mr. Callan. Callan. Does he know my reputation? Tell him to come in. What? Do it! Well, come in, Mr. Callan. Mr. Callan! Good oh. evening. Good evening, Mr. Callan. Don't you ever stand behind doors again, mate. You throw a shadow. Just you remember that. And don't you ever try to cosh me on the air, because I don't like folks that cosh me on the air. You remember that. Tom. Right, sit down, Mr. 
die, so though. Oh, Dicer, you go to your church, I go to mine. What are you playing at? I don't like meeting strangers. It only says you want information. Yeah. Do you have any containers? I want to find out about a man, a Pole. Do you know the name of this man? Yes, Andrei Bashevsky. He's a doctor of philosophy, he's a scientist, he's about 60 years old, and he took a degree at Warsaw University. Anything else? You are going to need water in yours. Oh, yeah, yes, Mr. Anything else? Yeah. He used to be married to a woman called Sophia back in 1940. Used to be? Yeah, the war got her. Got me also. Why do you want him? I just want him. Is he a communist? He's alive, isn't he? I don't like communists, Mr. Callan. This is for money. Even so, I don't like them. Before the war, I had an estate. People like this one looked after my pigs and kept out of my way. Now I'm grateful to them because they introduced me to you. Before the war, I'd had you arrested. You're breaking my heart. Is that why you don't like communists? That can because they stole my estate. They bought my parents and killed my brother. And where were you during all this? In RAF, defending your country. Oh, tough. Afterwards? I became a thief, a grass, a man who lives off women. <laughs> Poles are fascinated by self-destruction, Mr. Cullen, and very good at it. Perhaps I can find where this man is. One hundred nickel. I said perhaps it's not money only. What then? I have my hobby, Mr. Cullen, to hit back at those who hurt my country. Your interest may be part of it. I should like to speak to you in private. Scarpa. Oh, I've got nothing to do, Mr. Callan. It's my dinner time. Go and get your dinner, then. You still work for security. Why should they help you? Because if you do, mate, you could be hurting the Russians. <laughs> <laughs> you swear it? Yeah. I know a bit about Brzezinski. He's very powerful and very dangerous. Go on. I can't. Not now. I'll have to check. I need to know, Dyson. I was told that your word could be trusted. I hope it still can. Try me. I will. But it may take a day or two. Two. No more. <laughs> it's strange. You give me no warnings. Warnings? How this is all secret and that I must tell no one. You don't need any warnings, mate. You talk, I kill you. You know it. Do you know? I believe I do. Yeah. I must go now. Good night. When you get any information, you tell Landley, right? Oi! Go and frighten some old lady. You know, I've begun to like you, Callan. <laughs> Perhaps it's just as well for both of you. So he went to Oxford. Yes, sir. And then? He lost himself. He went to a cafe, had tea, then he made a phone call, sir. Long distance, I'd say. Lonely, sir, seems most likely. Oh, dear. We'll never hear the end of this, you know. Yes? Mr. Callan is here, sir. Oh, good. Bring him in, will you? Well, here he is, gentlemen. Be prepared for a little acid. Watch it, Charlie, sir. Callan, nice of you to look us up. Oh, I just had a little information. Thought you might like it. That's the bloke. You're bloody useless, you are, mate. Do you know that? One of your boys, Mears, is he? Well, it's about your type. What's wrong, Callum? What's wrong? He tried to follow me. He put on a bloody great pair of dark glasses. Thought it made him invisible. Or obvious, Callum. Perhaps we wanted you to see him. Thank you. Thank you, sir. You talked to Mrs. Rue. Mrs. Brzezewski. I listened. Why, Callum? Oh, you are fantastic. You are. Why didn't you tell me about Brzezewski? He's a very important man. He could do a lot of harm. Who told you that? Dicer. Dicer. 
The outraged Pole. I hope he didn't overcharge you. He's doing it for love, sir. He's doing it for hate, Callum. He hates too much. He makes him careless. What do you propose we should do about Bashevsky? Lift him. That would be nice. Does he know where his wife is? No, but he'd like to, apparently. He's been trying to find her for years. So you want me to bring them together? She's quite happy as she is. I don't think she'll welcome the past being dragged up. We've got to get Brzezewski, whatever it costs, even Mrs. Rule's sanity. This is Brzezewski. They've got a hundred megaton bomb now. Its fallout is frightening. Drop one here, you'd wipe out the whole country, every living thing. They've got the rocket big enough to take, but not the fuel. By the end of the year, Brzezewski will have the fuel. And you want him now? That would be ideal, Callum. And we can get him. He's been working too hard. He needs a rest. They're going to let him out to Sweden for a science conference. And he still loves his wife. Exactly, Callum. And that's precisely where your Mrs. Rule comes in. I want you to go back to her with the good news. Good news? That Brzezewski is still alive. Make her write a letter to him. Mears can deliver it to him in Stockholm. It's all arranged. She'll get hurt. Indeed she will. But even if we get Brzezewski, they'll still get the fuel. By the time they do, we'll have it too. What's my cover? An insurance assessor. I seem to remember she had a burglary. <laughs> oh, I'm going to hand it to you. You're a very devious man, but I've got to hand it to you. Thank you. Do a little homework, will you, for Dr. Rule's benefit? I can tell her that we want him alive. Of course. And we do. If it can be arranged. If not? The West will have the fuel next year. Without Brzezewski, the Russians may not. I just want him, Kellen. Sir. <laughs> Clever burglary, Mrs. Rule. He will not be caught then, Mr. No, Tucker, it is on my card. I, I very much doubt it. And all our things? Oh, melted down, broken up, sold. I'm sorry. There is one thing that does puzzle me, however. You, you say there are five houses on this side of the street? Yes. Well, do you know why the burglar chose you, Mrs. Rule? Sophie, I, uh... Oh, Charles, this is Mr. Tucker, the insurance assessor. My husband, Dr. Rule. How do you do, sir? We usually have a drink about now. How about you, Mr. Tucker? Whiskey and water, please. Would you get some water, darling? Of course. I wish you'd come to me. Well, I did try, sir. You're a very difficult man to pin down, Dr. Rule. I'm very busy. I do experimental work, I lecture and I practice. Oh, most people want to see me at once. When I couldn't contact you, naturally I contacted your wife. Yes, of course. Please sit down. The thing is, my wife's health is not good. Physically, she's fine. But worry is bad for her. She's very delicate. Oh, we try not to worry anyone, sir. On the contrary. And believe me, I understand that. But I would prefer it if in future you would come to me. Very well, sir. May I ask what you talked about? Uh, the stolen property. Uh, the, the cups, for instance. She seems very attached to those. Yes, I was very proud of them. No, vain. I rode in the diamond skulls before the war. Oh. Oh, thank you, darling. I think you'd better come to my study and talk to me there, Mr. Tucker. Oh, yes, of course, sir. Oh, must you take him away? Mr. Tucker has been most charming. Well, there'll be a whole lot of forms to fill in, uh, Sophie. Yes, I am afraid so. Oh, very well. Take him. But let us have our drinks first. Cheers. Sorry, darling. Yeah. This friend of yours, Alan, working agent. Oh, you can't. I'll have to do that. Don't be too important, lonely. I've not been too anything, mate. I just can't tell you where he lives. Get hold of him, then. I've got news for him, and it's good! God, yes. On. Hello. Hello. Don't you talk to me like that. 
I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Cannon. It's just that I've been trying to read, and there's nothing but interruptions. Yeah. yeah you got any news from Dyson? Well, he's been here for the Wednesday. He's got something good. Tomorrow afternoon, three o'clock, usual place. Oh, could I have my bill, please, Miss? Mr. Tucker. Oh, good afternoon, Mrs. Rule. This is my friend, Miss Gregory. Good afternoon, Miss Gregory. Mr. Tucker is my insurance assessor. Oh, that's good. Is everything going to be settled then? I hope so, Miss Gregory. My company always likes to do its best. I don't know what's happening to Oxford. We never used to have burglaries in the old days. <laughs> well, that's the price of progress, Miss Gregory. Oh, everyone's obsessed with material things. Cars, refrigerators, televisions. I suppose if one wants something badly enough, the simplest thing is to steal it. If one has no valid sense of morality, that is. Are you familiar with the criminal mind, Mr. Tucker? Well, I have to be my work, you know. Oh, how fascinating that must be. Oh, my Lord, I must go. I'm late for the lecture already. <laughs> Goodbye, my Goodbye, dear. I Goodbye, guess. Mr. Tucker. Goodbye, nice Mr. meeting Mr. you. Oh, my bad. <laughs> Bye. Goodbye. <laughs> Sit down, Mr. Tucker. I wanted so much to talk to you. My husband was afraid you would upset me. Is that it? Yes, yes, he was. Charles looks after me as if I were a princess. <laughs> Tell me about your work. I have two jobs. Really? I should have thought insurance... Well, that's merely a sideline. My real job is watching people. You mean you're a detective too? Well, sometimes I have to be. You see, people interest me. Hmm? For instance, do you remember, Mrs. Rule, I asked you if you had any idea why the burglar chose your house? Do you suppose we will ever know? I know. No. How? Your background. My background? Poland. Dachau. Your first marriage. Andrzej? You know about Andrzej? Well, we know the lot. Who is we? I hope you never know. You are not trying to blackmail me, are you? Yes. But I have nothing. Oh, it's not for money. Oh, for God's sake, please! Please, love. <laughs> what is it you want? I can't tell you here. Don't you know what you're doing to me? Yes, yes, it's all part of the treatment. But you go home now. Hmm? Don't talk to anyone, least of all your husband. I shall call around at your house tomorrow morning at nine o'clock when your husband's at the hospital. You are very thorough. Very. <laughs> go on, go home. And, uh, and you just think about your Andre. He's alive. Speak to Charlie, please. Callan here. And scramble it. Charlie? I should have the stuff you want by tomorrow morning. How much have you told her? Enough. Does she know Bryshevsky is still alive? Yes. In that case, we'd better keep a watch on her. We don't want her running to him, do we? Can't handle at this end. I don't trust those boys Mears is supposed to train. You sound unusually tetchy, Callan. I should think when this is all over, she'll finish up in a mental home. That bothers you? That really bothers me! Now try thinking about that hundred megaton bomb. That should bother you even more. How was Agnes? As usual. I thought you had a meeting tonight. I did, but I was worried about you. <laughs> I'm all right, Charles. Let me get you something. No, darling, thank you. I had some coffee with Agnes. Charles. Darling. I couldn't live without you, Charles. You know that, don't you? Was anyone else with you tonight? Just Agnes. And Mr. Tucker.
You are very prompt. I have to be. I'm in a hurry, love. Your husband at the hospital. Mr. Tucker, please, what is it you want? One letter. What? One letter to your husband. But Charles is with me all the time. Andre, Charles isn't your real husband, is he? Bigamy, they call it. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah, I know it's rough, but I'm in a hurry. What do you know about Andre? Enough. I saw his picture once, years ago, when the Russians made him an academician. I thought he was dead. You mean you hoped he was? I, maybe I love Charles Yeah, but so you're not much married to him, are you? Will you tell Charles? No. Neither will you. What will happen to Andre? That's none of your business, but I will tell you. You'll come to work for us. You won't hurt him? I want you to write a letter, Mrs. Brzezewski. I want you to write this letter. I will need my glasses. Of course. It is in Polish. Of course it's in Polish. The man who sent me isn't a fool. But this is not true. I'm not like this. Charles and I are happy. Write the letter, Mrs. Bischewski. There's the paper. There's the pen. Now, write. What the hell is all this? What are you doing to my wife? She's had some bad news. Do you want me to tell him or will you? He knows. It's about Andre. They want me to write to him. You know he's alive? I know. We want him. May I ask who we are? You may not, sir. And if my wife refuses? I do not refuse. Your wife is in a very nervous condition. A shock, like a bigamy trial, could finish it. I wouldn't try it if I were you, because you're very old and I'm much younger and much faster. And I'll tear you apart. I'll be right back where we started. Come on, get on with it. I'm in a hurry. My dearest Andre, it was only the other day that I learned, to my great joy, that you were still alive. I saw your picture in a magazine and it said that you would be attending a meeting of scientists in Stockholm. You realize what effect this could have on my wife? You're the doctor, doctor. 23 years ago, she was in Dachau, waiting for extermination. Her mind was broken. It took all my skill to bring her back to normal, and now Yeah, you... I know, I know, I know. My darling, I would so much like to see you again, just once more. There is a friend here in England who can arrange this. He belongs to a free Polish organization. It has brought many people to England. Please say that you will come too, if only for a little while. What is she writing? Lies. How in the name of God can you justify this? I don't have to justify it. That's not my job. I merely came for the letter. That's really very nice. Now here's the envelope. Write his name exactly as you used to write it. His name, Mrs. Brzezewski. Very nice. Take the letter, put it in the envelope. Come on, darling, come on. Now give me the letter. Right, that's that then, isn't it? This is unbearable. Yeah, I know, it really is, it really is. I may have to borrow your wife for a couple of days, just so that she can identify her husband. Damn you! Oh. No, I told you not to try that again. What did you think, Doctor? Eh? Think? I mean, that is the way you earn your living, isn't it? Thinking? The letter's perfect, according to our buffin. Brzezewski is on his way to Stockholm now. Three KGB men with him. Have a good trip. Thank you, sir. Um, yes. Sir. Nice quiet job, please. Yes, of course, sir. Come in, Dyson. Callan. What's the good news, mate? Is it 
Brzezki was once married. Yeah, I know. But he lost his wife, you said. I thought so, yeah. Well, Callan, the good news is this. Uh, his wife is alive again. My information is very serious and very accurate. Go on. Well, Brzezki has a flat in Warsaw. Somebody broke into it a little while ago. They stole a lot of things, including Brzezki's wedding picture and his marriage certificate. When this was known, the Polish security people told the KGB... You know why? Everything that happens to Brzezki is important to KGB. <laughs> but there is something else also, but I haven't got full information. Oh, come on, come on, let's have it. The KGB know that the British are inquiring about the wife. Do you know where she is? No, but they know. Now, the KGB are looking for her also. KGB. Who told you that? Dyson. You leave him? Why not? He's got nothing to gain, has he? At least we should assume he's right. This desk came through, sir. No, thank you. Splendid. The letter's done the trick all right. Bryshevsky gave them the slip at the opera last night. He and Mears are on their way to Newcastle. When they dock tomorrow morning, I'll arrange for a helicopter to take them to the local flying club. Come in again, will you? Yes, sir. Now. Assuming Dyson knows what he's talking about, the KGB will be on to Mrs. Rule very quickly. You better get down there fast. If she's not at home, Callum, find her wherever she is and take her to Newcastle. I'll meet you there in the morning. All right. Callum will need a fast car now to Oxford, and I want to get to Newcastle by early morning. Can you arrange it? Yes, sir. Now, how do I get her to Newcastle? Oh. Oh, we'll keep the RAF employed. Get on to Air Ministry, will you? We'll need another helicopter. Yes, sir. out as well. But there's two other geezers went in about ten minutes ago. I'd say they was following us. Two? Yeah. All right. Listen, you stick here and watch. And lonely, keep out of sight, all right? You must be joking. You're very quiet, Doctor. I'm thinking. What? What are you thinking? My thoughts are private. Are they? Perhaps you're wondering why you should help us to keep Brzezewski. You think you're betraying your country to save your wife. You are, Doctor. In the West, no doubt, that is an admirable thing to do. If I have to choose between saving my country and saving my friend, I hope I should have the decency to save my friend. One of your writers said that. Ian Forster. In a few minutes, we shall be leaving here for two days. After that, you can go on being just as you were before. 
I believe the word is futile, Dr. Uru. You have your darling Zovia to look after. How long before she betrays you too, Doctor? Please! Please! What kind of word is that? You endanger five years of work, the security of my country, and all you can say is please! Sophie! No. Huh? The crying is too noisy. Turn on the radio. No jazz, please. No bops. Real music. It's Brahms, a German bourgeois. One of my favorites. I doubt it. His values were E.M. Foster's. This isn't a seminar, Doctor. Oi! <laughs> Belt up. quid and a revolver. Not much of a life's work, is it, son? You're a particularly brutal man, aren't you, Tucker? I live my life, mate. You killed just now and your face shows nothing, nothing at all. Yeah. I was busy. I'm sorry about all this. I've got to take you to Newcastle, Mrs. Brzezewski. Don't you realize that my... my wife is very upset and frightened, and so am I. Can't you leave us alone? We've done what you asked. This is a nightmare for her. If you think this is a nightmare, mate, a bigamy trial would be hell. I will go with you if I must. Yes. I didn't have no time there's left, Mr. Cutler. I don't want to come in. I don't want you in, mate. All right, you watch him go. Yeah, no, he went to the station. He made a long phone call. He wrote down a lot of notes. Then he bought a ticket, got on a train for Newcastle. Oh, he Newcastle. changed it at Paddington and then at King's Cross. Yeah, single? Yeah. Didn't rumble you? Oh, Mr. Cutler. Are you sure? If he had, would it be here? No, all right, all right. Come on. Oh, money. Okay. Here you are. Come on. Oh, Thank you. You mind how you go, right? Yes. Well, the other one's gone to Newcastle. Do I still have to go with you? Yes. We'll both go. No. Just the lady. No, not yet. You tired? Not for sleep. I can never be tired again for sleep. No, that, that bloke I, I killed, he, he was in the KGB. You, you know what that means, don't you? Every Paul knows what that means. If I'd given him half a chance, he would have killed me. Life's not so important to me. Not even to your husband? Which husband? <laughs> the one you love, Mrs. Rule. Did you know what Brzezewski's doing? I knew only that he was famous. Yeah, well, he's developing a fuel for a rocket that carries a nuclear warhead. And you want it? Yeah, we want it. So that you can drop nuclear warheads on them? Oh, no. Your argument does not interest me anymore. I've seen too many people die. One day I think it will not interest you either. Is 
You all right? Yeah, I should do. Now, listen carefully. I want no mistakes. Here is a picture of Bryshevsky. Do you recognize him? Of course. Look at it. That is OJ. Good. A man who looked like that is on the helicopter. Please. Can you see? I can see. There's a fireman standing there by the van. Describe him, please. Quite tall, broadly built, dark curly hair. Could be foreign. Italian, maybe? All right, you can see. Now, when Brzezewski goes past, if you're sure it is Brzezewski, you will go out of the door and call out to him. One of us will pretend to hold you back. He loves you very much. He's risked his life to find you. It would be only natural for him to come to your rescue, Mrs. Rule. And when he comes to me, what do I say to him? Say whatever you wish, ma'am. You won't see him again. Here we go. You will kill him too? Mrs. Rule, be sensible. We want him alive. The KGB may not. I'm cold. Be all over in a minute. Wait until you're sure. Yes. Yes. It is our ship. He looks so old. And you say he still loves me. He's been looking for you for over 20 years. He even got the Russian government to look for you. It must be very important to them. He's important to all of us. Right, he's on the move now. Ready, Mrs. Rule? I'm ready. Don't forget. Call out to him. Struggle. I won't forget. you to leave quietly, Mrs. Rule, in a minute or two. It would be better if the police knew nothing of your part in this. He only said my name. Stop here, he said. Stop here. Look after her, Callum. I'll go and sort this out. Yeah, you go and sort it out, sir. Yes.